Thank you, Bill. It truly is a great honor to join you and the other distinguished previous honorees as a recipient of IPR's Hamilton Award. Your words of introduction were very kind and deeply appreciated, as is our longtime friendship. And I should thank John and Amor and Tom as well for those incredibly generous remarks. I would also like to express my deep thanks to the board of IPR for this recognition. It is both humbling and gratifying to find my name among those who have been honored with this award, mentors and friends all. And I would like to associate myself with the remarks that Mark and Bei Ling just made, great leaders and great, great thoughts, and I totally subscribe to everything. I know that my presence here would not be possible without the friendship and support and contributions of hundreds of people, many of whom are here this evening. I dare not start naming names, but please know that I fully acknowledge and appreciate everything that you, my friends and colleagues, have done to support me and to enrich my life over the years. <clears throat> there is, however, one person that I would like to single out, as I certainly would not be here without her love, her sacrifice, and her advice, my wife, Lynn. We've been on this great adventure together, supporting each other in our aspirations and raising three amazing young adults who also are here this evening, Taylor, Tim, and John. You three inspire us every day. Thank you, Lynn, for bringing the wind beneath my wings, even as I strive to do the same for you as you build a world-class theater. I also want to... <clears throat> I also want to thank the PAGE staff, past and present, for the incredible work that you do to support our profession. I could not be prouder. And I want to acknowledge IPR for advancing the science beneath the art of public relations. I've watched with admiration as Jack Felton, Frank Oviatt, and now the incredible Tina McCorkendale have made this organization indispensable to the practice of corporate communication. Page and IPR have chosen to honor two of America's founders. Every new Page member receives a Jefferson Cup, and IPR has the Hamilton Award. The fact that Jefferson and Hamilton were mortal enemies shouldn't impact us at all, should it, <laughs> Tina? As a former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, I have a special affinity for the first secretary, whose statue I pass daily on my way into the office. So in preparing these remarks, I thought about Alexander Hamilton's complex life and character, and three themes emerged that I would like to explore in this critical moment where enterprises today are being challenged by profound disruption, which is driven not only by technology, but also by geopolitical and demographic change and heightened stakeholder expectations. CEOs are looking for help. Chief communication officers should be at the center of redefining and transforming their companies. But if we don't step up, CEOs will turn to others who will. So there are lessons for us today in these three themes in Hamilton's life. Diversity, civility, and the power of persuasion. First, let's consider Hamilton's status as the son of unmarried parents who was abandoned by his father and orphaned at an early age. He was born on Nevis, spent his early years on St. Croix, shunned by neighbors and peers because of his birth status. He was, however, far better off than the African slaves there who were subjected to horrific treatment which disgusted Hamilton and made him, quote, conspicuous among the founding fathers for his fierce abolitionism, according to biographer Ron Chernow. What's the lesson for us today? In a world beset by tribalism, and resentment of those not like us, we have a responsibility to promote diversity and to advocate for opportunity for all. We can begin... <clears throat> we can begin with our own profession, which is not as diverse as it should be. Page and LeGrant and the PRSA Foundation do great work on diversity, and many of you have programs in your own firms, but we can and must do more. 
we can insist upon more women and people of color in the most senior roles, we can provide equal pay for equal contributions, and we can make sure <clears throat> We can make sure that our organizations are truly diverse and inclusive. Soon we will be announcing a new industry-wide effort to make even more progress, and I hope you will join us and do your part to help drive change. We can do better. <clears throat> Second, let us consider the importance of civility. In Hamilton's time, there were deep divisions between our leaders, which ultimately cost Hamilton his own life. Chernow described it this way, quote, poison pen artists on both sides wrote vitriolic essays that were overtly partisan, often paid scant heed to accuracy, and sought a visceral impact, unquote. It sounds discouragingly like the environment today, and in this, obviously, the founders were not good role models to be admired. They did, however, find ways to compromise for the good of the nation, a value that now appears to be sorely lacking. When I worked in Washington for a Republican congressman early in my career, he battled with his Democrat counterpart as they led their respective caucuses during the first national energy crisis in the 1970s. The stakes were high, but they always found a way to compromise for the good of the nation. At the end of the day, when the gavel came down, Bud Brown and John Dingell were often seen walking from the committee room, arm in arm, laughing and joking. They respected each other, and they were pals, as were, famously, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill. So the second lesson from Hamilton is this. Incivility may be on the rise again, but it is not inevitable. We can argue passionately for our positions, but we also must listen with respect to those with whom we disagree, making it possible to work together and to find solutions. We can do better. <clears throat> Third and last, let us consider the awesome power of persuasion. Hamilton's Federalist Papers represent a masterclass in the power of thoughtful argument to win popular support for a just cause. But we should take note that before it came time to seek public approval for the Constitution, Hamilton was at the center of the internal debates at the Constitutional Convention. The early American states were deeply divided, and there were signs that the fledgling Confederation would not long survive. Hamilton was dogged in his pursuit of the principles he believed in, most clearly the need for a strong federal government and the balance of power between the three branches. This ingenious system has proven over time to be the savior of our country from the extremes of any one person or party. Those of you who are familiar with the PAGE model know that at PAGE we argue that the role of the chief communication officer is first and foremost to help the enterprise define and activate its corporate character based on strong values and a sense of public purpose. The power of persuasion starts in our internal debates over policy, just as it did for Hamilton at the Constitutional Convention. It is not our job to burnish the tarnished image of undeserving clients. Our job is to help our clients to be deserving of trust by creating value for society in addition to customer and shareholder value. <clears throat> It is our duty, as it was Hamilton's, to advocate within our institutions for the values and policies that make them worthy of trust, and then to reach out to all stakeholders, as he did with the Federalist Papers, to build shared belief around the principles that we hold dear. So that's it. Three lessons from Hamilton. In a world increasingly divided by tribalism and nationalism, I ask you to join me in embracing diversity, in advancing civility, and in building enterprises that are worthy of trust around principles that improve lives for all. All of us in this noble profession have a responsibility to advocate for justice, to support reason and compromise, and to oppose tribalism, bias, racism, and violence. We can do better, we must do better, and we can lead the way. Finally, let me thank you for this award. Thank you.